One day after finishing school, I was called to a little church down in Montgomery, Alabama. And I started preaching there. Things were going well in that church. It was a marvelous experience. But one day, a year later, a lady by the name of Rosa Parks decided that she wasn't going to take it any longer. She stayed on a bus seat. You may not remember it because it's way back now, several years, but it was the beginning of a movement where 50,000 black men and women refused absolutely to ride the city buses and we walked together for 381 days. Yes, sir. That's what we got to learn in the North. The Negroes have to learn to stick together. We stuck together. We sent out the call. No Negro rode the buses. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. People of Montgomery asked me to serve as the spokesman. And as the president of the new organization, the Montgomery Improvement Association, that came into being to lead the boycott, I couldn't say no. And then we started our struggle together. Things were going well for the first few days, but then about 10 or 15 days later after the white people in Montgomery knew that we meant business. They started doing some nasty things. They started making nasty telephone calls and came to the point that some days more than 40 telephone calls would come in threatening my life, the life of my family, the life of my children. I took it for a while in a strong manner. And I never will forget one night very late. It was around midnight. And you can have some strange experiences at midnight. I had been out meeting with the steering committee all that night. I came home. My wife was in the bed and I immediately crawled into bed to get some rest, to get up early the next morning to try to keep things going. And immediately, the telephone started ringing and I picked it up. On the other end was an ugly voice. 